Welcome, Gemini. How are you? I hope that you are well. I hope that your loved ones are well. I hope that you are in a place of peace. This is G and we are going to walk through together your all astrology for the month of August. We are going to take a look at the first 15 days. That's our main area of focus. We will probably touch in about a little bit about September because we have some fascinating frequencies. We have Mars doing lots of things. We have combative energies. We have Pluto and Mars going head to head. We've got Mercury and Mars. We've got Mercury and Pluto. We've got Uranus. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. Throw away all the astrology jargon and we're going to try to talk about it in ways where we understand the who, the where, the how, the when, why, what may be happening, and just look at it logically. Discern, try to figure out what it is that we can do the next correct steps. <laughs> All right, Gemini, here we go. I want you to think about something before I even go into the reading. We're gonna go over five things. Backwards countdown, we're gonna go over five things for you. But there is this area of your life keeps coming up. It keeps occurring. It's like this, and I just got this, like as I hit the record button, it just came through really strongly. There is an event, there is an unconscious value system, something that you hold onto. You're fixed in your ways in this value. There's a fixed love of something. And you are being asked to realize this and to realize that there's this thing or this person, because when I say love, it could be a person or it could be the way you love yourself. Like there's a lot of different ways this energy can express because you have free will. Another, There's another event that's coming around and it will bring about a shock and a surprise to you, but it's not new. It's not like it's a brand new event. The, the, the bigger meaning of it, the bigger happening of it, right? Like some of the players might be different, some of the people involved, like it might be a new face, but it's the same thing that's occurring. And so there's something in your unconscious. It is something you likely could have brought with you from a past life, a past life value, a past love from another lifetime. This could also be someone that you were with earlier in your life, depending upon who you are and how old you are in this lifetime. This could have been someone from your past, somebody you haven't let go of, someone you just haven't been able to release. I want you to think about fixed energy, fixed love energy. It's that tight fist. And I know I talked about this for Geminis a while back. I remember now, actually, me using this fist analogy. It's the fixed energy of desire when it gets something that it likes, it holds on to it and it holds on to it so tightly, it could crush it, it could kill it. But at the same time, it could also be holding on to a love of a thing, a love of a person, a love of an idea. It could be definitely a love of a thing because it's this is Taurus energy. And Taurus energy is about things that are beautiful, things that are just aesthetically attractive, balanced, there's this peace, there's this, this beauty. This is Taurus energy. It's all about this, the five senses, right? There's this sensuality. And so as there is this love and this desire for something. It's the planet Uranus. And it is saying it's time to let that go. This isn't G talking. This is the universe speaking. And it's hard for you to see this because it's all in your 12th house. So it's hidden energies, psychological, it's deep. It's something you're not aware of. So there could be a love in this life that you've actually had a relationship with before in a past life, which means that would make it even harder to let go of. For Taurus energy, it's comfortable energy. So it could be, a there's a love of things because you can depend depend on them or you think you can depend on them or you can rely on it. There is something somewhere, a sense of comfort involved. Don't want to change because of that comfort. And that's how Taurus energy is. It's the bull in the pasture that just stands there. You know, like not too long ago, I saw some people doing some really horrible things and I it was, it was really upsetting to me. The bull didn't want to do what they wanted it to do. They were trying to engage. They were trying to they're trying, I can't think of the word, my Mercury is really, really doing a number on me. I can't think of my words, but they were trying to, they were like antagonizing it. They wanted it to react. They were trying to get a reaction out of it. Basically like instigating, you know, they were coming along and doing things to it 
to get it to react, to get it to move, to get it to change, to do something different. And that is what the planet Uranus wants you to do. Uranus wants you to do something different, not to be so, so fixed. It wants you to be willing to, if I need to come by and take this from you, I can take it. It doesn't want you to fight. It wants you to be able to hold on to something without killing it, without crushing it, and to hold on to something, love it, cherish it, and nurture it. But at the same time, if the universe should come by, or another human being, or some sort of an event happens, and, the, and it changes, and it takes something away, it, you, you realize it, and you're like, okay, this is going away now, and it's time for me to release. And this is a message that I had no plan on giving. <laughs> it just, again, I always have these plans. Okay, here's the astrology for this sign. This is what I'm going to do. And then, yeah, it's like, no, you have to deliver this message. So this is the message for whoever you are that needs to hear this. That is your personal private message for you. And maybe there's a bunch of people likely going through the same thing because that's the thing about rising signs. There's a commonality. You're all bonded in that way. So let's get into the five things. The five things for Gemini. Uranus will be a factor in this reading, by the way, but it wasn't that. This is a different thing. But although maybe it's not. Maybe it's actually the, the hidden, hidden stuff, the, the behind the scenes anyway. So let's get into number five. The end of July, the beginning of August. I mentioned this in the other videos for July. If you haven't seen those videos, you want to go watch them because it will explain events that happened in July for you. Once the month of July got over with, fight mentality. Maybe not necessarily us and them. What about me? What about me. I'm not being taken care of. There are things that I need because Mars is in the sign of Aries and it's like really strong. And so when we look at the Aryan energy, it has to do with our body, with who I am, with what I desire, with what I want, with what my passions are. Why isn't that being talked about here? Why am I and my body, the safety of my body, why is that not being talked about? That Why isn't that part of this discussion? And it should be. My physical body's safety. So I look at your stuff and I find your Martian energy, your Aryan energy, right? Because this is Mars and Aries for the next five months. And so this is your 11th house. This is your, your group activity. This is the internet. So when Mars got there, right, a couple weeks ago, Mars just was very empowered and Mars felt like, yes, yes, it's time to get with people. It's time to be within my tribe. It's time to be within a group. Aryan energy, and that is so much about taking action with my body, doing things with the group. So whatever it is that you like to do with your group, this is also, because it's the 11th house, this is also the internet. This is also astrology. And so this, this whole thing is all about how I am within the group. Who am I within that group? I do need to be considered when we're talking about my body within groups. And I need to be smart. Use this and hold on to this because if you have been engaging in group activity, you know, we all have, we have a pandemic going on. Doesn't matter where we live now, right? We're all on the planet earth here and we're talking about the pandemic. Mars and Aries, Mars is very impulsive. Just does, says, I got this thought, this idea, I want to do it. And it goes and does it. Doesn't think things through. So you're, you're being asked to be very cautious within group actions. I know that seems like, like, is that anything new? We're being told social distancing, right? We're being told this, this is all over the place because of the energies. Your Martian energy is like, but we can do this. We don't got to worry about that. We got this. Everybody's fine, right? Understand that as this, as August develops, as the days go on in the month of August, there's going to be some friction and it's not going to be far after the full moon. The full moon happens on the 3rd of August. This is point number four, August 3rd, and it's at 11 degrees and 46 minutes. And so it's, it's the full moon occurring. When I look at your chart, it's in your ninth house. And your ninth house is what you believe in, how you believe. Your opinions, it is your judgments. This is all in your ninth house. And this is where the full moon occurs. When a full moon comes, it shines a light on something. So if the full moon will be shining the light on some sort of some belief of yours, some opinion of yours. Now, does that have to do with anything about what I already said? You let me know. I would love to you to get an update on what's going on and how these energies play out in your life. But to see them play out in your life requires a level of awareness, of developed awareness to see, oh my gosh, this is that. Maybe you're there. Maybe you're just beginning that because this is your ninth house. You're in your ninth house. You have Aquarius energy there. Typically for Gemini Ascendant, I use a tropical Placidus house system. If you don't know what this is and you want to know, if you want any more information, if you need a birth, if you need a rising sign, you need anything at all that has to do with what I'm talking about, 
when it comes to having a chart and knowing your rising sign, comment your stuff below. I will hook you up. So your ninth house is what I believe. Now your ninth house is also about your beliefs about traveling long distances because that is the ninth house. It's about my ability to get in an airplane and fly. Your ninth house is all that my ability to be in flight. There's testing, there's stress, there's tension, and we are all expecting expecting and experiencing this for all of August. And for some of us, it'll be much stronger and harsher than others. They might, you know, slide by and not, it might not be so difficult. Now for you, time of ascension. I'm going to tell it to you. Okay. This is a time when you can really ascend. The more aware you are of your unconscious beliefs, your unconscious thinking, your unconscious actions, the more you develop the awareness of those, the more you develop another degree of your being that can be the watcher of self, that can be the watcher of the ego. It is time to let your soul take control. Otherwise, your ego will. And you don't want that to happen. And your ego is that Mars energy. Mars is the ego. Now, Mars is in your 11th house. It is in your group energy. That's where your Aries energy is at. And it is going to point number three, point number three, there's going to be a big T-square. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's Mars. It's Mercury. It's Mars squaring Pluto. You know, there's a lot of big players involved. There's Mercury opposing Saturn, which means we have bouts of depression right around the full moon. There's this depressing thought of, oh my God, what? No more. I can't take this, right? There's some depressing thoughts about responsibility, about work. It's going to pass though, okay? Because Mercury moves really fast. It's going to pass. But we have to be aware of the bigger energies that are going to be at play. We're going to have Mercury squaring Uranus and then Uranus squaring some big dogs, right? Uranus is going to be, you know, there's going to be some uncomfortable stuff around August 3rd, you know, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, some really uncomfortable stuff. And then there's going to be some real shocks and surprises around August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Some real surprises around that time. And these could be really shocking because some of these surprises, because they involve the planet Uranus in the sign of Taurus. And we have the planet Uranus squaring, right? An ecliptic point, literally. And so there's these, there's these potentials for earth changes, shocking earth changes, right? So it could be things like, you know, volcanoes erupting and some earthquakes. There could be stuff like that happening. There could be. But on a small scale, on a very private scale in your own life, Uranus and Taurus is things that you value. When events happen, when we realize that the earth is our home, and, and, and all of a sudden that gets disrupted, we start to change our values. And that's the big picture. That's the macro meaning of all the stuff and all the events. And yes, even the pandemic is whose life do you value? And we're seeing that. We're seeing where people who have to deal with the public, who are considered essential needs workers, literally being thrown on the front lines of this pandemic. It's like, what's the problem? Why can't you go to work? And then and on the other side of that is the person who's like, what? Wait a minute. I'm like, I'm confused. Why am I considered I'm essential yet? It's okay that I am put in, you know, in danger in harm's way. And then being put in harm's way, I go back home to my family. Right. And so there's, there's this complex layer of things going on. Not to mention, not to mention there's the abuse of power. This is a big thing for August, abuse of power. We see it at the butt end of July and we see it the, the, the full moon, then the third. I'm excited actually to see how this will actually come about because it's all about people who are in power, whether they're the people in the government, whether they're people at the JOB, it's whoever the boss is, right, of your Capricorn energy. And so for you, your Capricorn energy takes place in your eighth house. And your eighth house is your bonded relationships. You're bonded emotionally. You have deep relate. These are people you are, have really deep relationships with. So this could be the person that you're married to, but this can, this displacement, again, this reemphasizes the message that I said, that I talked about at the beginning. There are folks who we are bonded to because we have past life energies with them. We have emotional ties with them. It's looking very much like this is a time when it's time to cut some of those ties. It is time to be only around people who cherish you, who nurture and who love and who support and who are there in your life. It is time to recognize that you are not second in anyone's life. And if you are second in anyone's life, then those are the folks that it's time to say, okay, you are no longer first in my life. I now need to make sure that you become second in my life. We're going to go to number one, number one for you. Number one, number one is a biggie. 
It's a doozy, actually. Now, depending upon who you are and what's going on in your life, I, if you have a chart, I want you to find out where your natal planet Mercury is at. Because knowing what sign your natal Mercury is in and the house that it's sitting in will help give you more details to what I'm about to share with you. And so unless I see your chart in front of me, I can't give you the more details, but I've just told you how to find out. And if you have your chart in your hand and you're, if you're like, gee, my Mercury is in such and such sign and it's in such and such house, but I don't know what that means, just comment that to me. I will, I will, get, I will comment back and I'll, I'll help you figure that out. So here's number one. Number one is the North Node and the South Node. Okay, the Moon's nodes are very powerful and wherever they go in your chart, the transiting up in the sky moon's nodes has so much to do with where you're headed and with what you're leaving behind. When I look at the moon's nodes, and the reason I'm looking at them is because we are going to have the transiting up in the sky south node conjunct the galactic center. So the south node means this is what we're saying goodbye to, that area of our life we're done with. We've already been there, we've done that, it's over. That being conjunct the galactic center, the galactic center, this point happens around 27 degrees. Where are we at? Like August 10th, August 15th, August 16th, August 17th. Once we get to August 10th, things start getting very heated up in general. But then we get to August 12th, August 13th, and that's when the moon's axis, the moon's nodes are sitting conjunct the galactic center. And at the same time, we've got Mars squaring the transiting Saturn, transiting Mars squaring Saturn at like 27 degrees in cardinal signs. So it's all very, there's these rules, there's people in charge, there's figures in our life who we look up to, who we admire. Uh, that's that Saturn Capricorn energy. I call them the boss of our life because in a way we look up to them like they're there to guide us. They're there to teach us. They take care of us in some sense. And so many times in a chart, Saturn slash Capricorn energy can be depicted as masculine energy, as the authoritative person in your life, as the father figure in your life. What's fascinating with this is that Mars squares Saturn at that time when we get around the, the, the 15th, 16th, 17th. It's, it's, it's just after we've come off of Mars squaring Pluto. So it's Mars squaring Pluto, Pluto I keep saying Pluto. Mars squaring Pluto is, is battle, is fight time. And the energies are very combative because along with the whole August 3rd stuff, we had the sun squaring Uranus, which was expect the unexpected, expect surprises. It's a day of anything can happen day and a day of where you need to do something different, a day where you should plan to do something out of your typical routine. So if you don't make a plan to do something out of your typical routine, you'll have this energy within you. And it's best to make a plan instead of letting it come at you, right? And so just be aware of that. But I'm bringing that back up again, that full moon energy, because it's like, it's like there's an essence of the combativeness of the expect the unexpected of the holy crap shocks and surprises for the month of August. You know, this is that make sure your seatbelt's still on, make sure you're still wearing masks, make sure you're, whatever the rules are that are for the best for all involved, make sure you're, you're keeping engaged with those and that you're actively involved in those. It is such an uncertain month. It is such a, it's such a month where there's transformational energies at play and Pluto's involved. So when we look at the South Node energy of we're letting this go, this is in opposite of your sign, Gemini. It's in your Sagittarius energy because the North Node is in your sign. It's in Gemini in your first house. Now, Gemini with North Node on anybody's ascendant, this is a new beginning of your appearance and of how you are to the world, a new beginning of how you think of how you relate, of how you communicate, because that's Gemini energy. A new skill set could be a new job because it's on your ascendant. So when it's on our ascendant, our ascendant has to do with where our physical body is in the world. And with the node coming through there, the north node, it will, will be there, right? It's going to be in your sign for like, what do we got left? 16 months? So this is a good amount of time. There's more than a year that you're going to have the node transiting through your through your through your physical body. Many times this could mean a new place of location, a new place where you're going to be living. But let's take a look at the south node because on the opposite end is Sagittarius energy, and this is in your seventh house. 
So the south node in the seventh house, well, what is seventh house? These are partnerships. These are people that we've hooked up with, people where we've been in a committed partnership in some way. So it could be business partnerships too. But there's an ending because it's the south node and you can't fight the moon's nodes. No matter how much you want to, you can't fight it. And typically, again, I'm just realizing this is another reinforcing, this is another astrological aspect that is reinforcing the original message that came blaring through right at the beginning of this video, which took me by surprise because, you know, I had all this other stuff to talk about because it's what's happening with the, with the energies. But again, this is that then. This is the proof. This is that. This is the south node. The south node in Sagittarius conjunct the galactic center. If you're not sure how powerful that is, galactic center, it's considered source for the galaxy that we live in. And the galactic center considered the source, the point of source, the point of creation for our galaxy means basically it's like, wow, that's God energy. I can't fight God. I can't fight that I can't fight the universe. I can't fight that energy. I, you know, it's, it's like my will or divine will. And this is divine will coming through and saying, you've already done this. You don't need it anymore. It's not good for you. It's actually preventing you from growing. And so there is a relationship because this is their seventh house. Now, again, check your tropical placidus chart. You're looking for 27 degrees in Sagittarius energy. With that said, I'm going to give you a bonus point to walk away with. And that is talking about your north node. That is talking about the opposite of the releasing energy. This is a reinforcement of what's going to be happening. Because very shortly after this, Venus is going to be sitting right here at this point. Venus is going to be sitting exact, I mean like exactly on top of the north node in Gemini. Venus is still out of bounds. We haven't talked about Venus being out of bounds for some months now. Venus has a tendency. Venus is all about relationships. Venus is about love. Venus is about giving. Venus is about receiving, my ability to receive. With feminine energies, the mother energy, the nurturer, cancer energy, there is a tendency to sacrifice. And women usually, right, or it could be men who have strong feminine qualities, who have these nurturing energies, there is this ability to sacrifice and to say, okay, I get it, I understand. And there is this over-understanding. And what happens when we do this over-understanding thing? We end up being an enabler. We actually give somebody else the ability to keep doing what they're doing, even though it's extreme and even though it's literally taking advantage of somebody else and so Venus out of bounds going into your first house here's your first house and here's that Sagittarian energy I talked about what you're letting go of in your seventh but Venus being here in the first house conjunct the north node Venus is going to be all about you loving you you giving yourself the understanding, you giving yourself the empathy and the nurturing ability to logically walk yourself through how somebody else in your life that you considered a significant one-on-one -on -one is no longer good for you. Venus will be there. Venus will say, hey, wait a minute. We have been sacrificing for far too long. This is now time for us to look out for us, not to be dependent on somebody else to look out for us. This is Venus coming through conjunct the North Node in your first house. Again, this is Venus. Venus brings gifts. Venus is out of bounds. So that means she can bring more gifts than you expected. So more gifts for self-love. This is a huge message of self-acceptance, of self-nurturing, of self-love, making yourself a priority, not the other person, not the seventh house. They're no longer a priority. You've mastered that. That's what that means. Wherever the south node is, you've already mastered that. So that's not what you're supposed to be doing right now because this is where the transiting planets are happening for you, Gemini. You are letting go some sort of significant partnership. You're releasing it. You can do this because you got Venus in the first house. Venus is here to support you. This is the universe's way of saying, I am love. I am universal. I am good and I can give you good. I can help you learn how to receive because this is the thing. This is the real, this is the real details of giving so much to somebody else because we don't really honestly feel we're worthy. So we're willing to bend. We're willing to accept the things that they do that would be considered unacceptable to others in a significant one-on-one -on -one relationship. Venus comes through and says, did you see that? Did you hear that? Are you sure that this is right for you? And in case you don't have a clear answer on that, 
I'm Venus and I'm here to tell you, you are so worthy and so much better than that. And you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be cherished. You deserve to have someone in your life who will appreciate you for who you are and who will make the time to be with you. They're not making the time to be with you. They don't deserve the time. They do not deserve your time. Your time is the one thing in your life you cannot create. It is precious. So realizing how precious you are, realizing every minute that you're breathing is a minute you could be spending with somebody else who appreciates you. Take this message. Understand you are loved. Understand you are divine. Understand you are worthy.